Hello, you're on Public Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on refactoring Terraform modules. And today, I will be revisiting my ECS Terraform module and update my implementation on container definitions. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interest, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. When I set up this ECS infrastructure Terraform module, I set up the very bare minimum requirements to satisfy my needs back then. And then I got this comment from K Ginger TV asking how he could enable execute command on the ECS service. And it made me wonder how best to handle all the container definition properties that can be overridden, including the command property. So let's have a look at what changes are involved to make this possible. If I open my variables.tf on this Terraform module, I define a strict data structure for my container definitions input variable. And if I want to enrich this variable to allow for other container definition properties, I will need to update this variable for every property that I need to add. And if I go ahead and open my locals.tf, this is where I interpolate the values of the container definitions input variable. And so if I make changes to that variable, I need to make changes in here too. I don't want to keep on getting back to this module every time I realize that I needed a new parameter. So the first thing I will do is change the definition of my input variable. And so instead of strictly typecasting this variable, I will change this to be a list of map. And then on my locals.tf, what I will do is instead of using a template file, I will look through each element of my input variable. I know that each element of the list is a map, and so I will then loop through each key value pair in each definition. And then I'm going to set the key value pair inside the loop. However, if the value is an object, I need to make sure that I interpolate this value further and make sure that it is structured in a way that ECS will be able to process. This is generally the case for container definition parameters that require maps or objects as values. So what I will do is try to interpolate the map object like this. What I'm doing here is wrap the statement with a try function and attempt to restructure the value into a list that contains name and value keys. And if that fails, I will use a direct value assignment at line 10. I also need to update this block further to make sure that secrets property is handled properly. And what I'm doing at line 8 is checking that the key string is secrets. And if it is, I will use the value from string instead of value. But how about when the value passed is an array of string? What I need to do then is, on the first argument of my try statement, I will introduce a child try statement. On my new try statement, I am trying to convert the list to a set, which will always work for objects that are list or array. If, on the other hand, the value is not a list, which we know is the case if the value is a map, the statement will evaluate the next parameter which will handle the restructuring for my other parameters that are recognized as maps. The other piece that is missing on this new container definition setup is my CloudWatch log setup. In this Terraform module, I want to set up my log configuration for each container definition if the property is not provided. And the way I will do this is add a call to a merge function for each definition block. And my second parameter in this merge function will be a call to a lookup function. What I'm doing inside this lookup function is checking whether the log configuration is defined and passed as part of the input variable. If this does not exist, this lookup function will return null. And if this is the case, I will set up the log configuration settings on the container definition and pass that as the second parameter for my call to merge function. Otherwise, I will pass an empty map. Now, let me fill up the logic for setting up the actual log configuration. 
I already have that defined in my old container definitions local parameter. So what I'm going to do is scroll down to that part where the definition is, which is right here, and then copy that definition without the JSON encode function and update this component of the logic. And now I can get rid of the old code block that used to set my local container definition. And now let me head to my VS Code terminal and commit and push my changes. I also need to create a new tag for my latest changes, but first I need to list all the tags that I've created so far. The last tag that I have in here is 0.10.0. And so I will set the new tag and then push my tag changes. And now let me switch to my browser. And then in here, I'm going to head to releases and then tags and then select the tag that I've created and then create release. And then all the way to the bottom of this page, click publish release. And now I'm going to switch to my working with ECS repository to verify that nothing was broken after my changes. This is my working with ECS repository. And on this VS Code session, I will expand my ECS directory and open my Telegram configuration file. And in here, I'm going to change the version of the source for my Terraform module. And then I'm going to head to my VS Code terminal and prepare for running my Telegram command. My Telegram apply is complete. And so now let me verify that everything still works. So let me switch to my browser and access WordPress publishspot.ml and that still works and that's all i have for today stay tuned as i continue to explore ways of improving and refactoring my terraform modules in the meantime let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel until next time keep learning and stay safe see ya